You know, the universe is endless. The earth is not. Soon it will have to carry about 10 billion humans. And I think if we reach this level, there might be the time to answer the question, departure from Earth. Is it a realistic survival opportunity for mankind? Interesting question. So, this question requires to go in a logical approach through a number of points, and I will explain this a little bit with old-fashioned view graphs which you can read. <laughs> There will be in about half a billion years a situation where the Earth becomes so hot that no living creature exists anymore. This also applies for, to the humans. And therefore, this clever physician uh, Stephen Hawking said, if mankind wants to survive, it must spread out into the universe. So let's look at it. Can we do this? The first question, of course, is what would actually force us to leave the Earth? Because it's not an easy de departure. There are a number of critical events which might be reasons caused by nature. Catastrophes caused by m people, by mankind. And if you look at all the details, which you can read in the uh, later on a little bit, there's only one important box which provides success for a departure. And this is orderly controlled departure. You see all the other things, the errors lead to no success or survival and anything hasty at escape and so on in between. But there are only two errors which lead to this box. Interestingly, this is the condemnation of other non-conforming people, strange behavior of our human society. The British have already done this some two or three hundred years ago. They didn't want to have the criminals in the uh, on the island anymore, they built ship, caught them, put them into the ship and say, we bring you to Australia and there you can do whatever you like. <laughs> Luckily, they were so intelligent, these criminals, that they founded a respectable nation in Australia. It's uh, the big capabilities of humans. So. This might be the case that some people which we don't like are told, you go somewhere else, leave our earth. And then is the question, where do we put them or tell them to go? This is definitely the next uh, habitation places might be our solar system. But forget it, in the long term they will not survive. This will not be a uh, place for human future because of, I tell you a little bit later, but um, for long-term survival, we need to undertake, really leave our, need to leave our solar system and undertake a long journey. The reason is Venus on this picture is just about the size like Earth, Mars a little bit more than half of the diameter, Moon a bit more than half of the mass. Venus is too hot, too near at the sun, and mass is too small. The atmosphere is not very good, but it has not got a magnetic field like our Earth, which protects us against the high radiation and the high energy impact uh, from the sun and out of the deep space environment. So where might we stay and find a habitat. In the another solar-like system, definitely yes. 
There are nearly uh, 1,000 stars within five, 50 light years distance. 40 of them have 87 exoplanet. This is what we know today. Tomorrow we know a couple of, certainly maybe hundreds more. Eight appear to be Earth-like, and some of them even move around their star in the habitable zone. So there's a high probability to find a place in 50 light years. This shows the picture of about our neighborhood, about 15 light years diameter there. And you see uh, here the Proxima Centauri, which is the nearest to us, 4.24 light years away. And here you can see Sirius position. There is the star which we look like uh, like to look at in winter time. In tabular form, you see that they are in 17 light years. And 17 light years is about uh, 1 million times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. There you see 50 stars, the colored ones are those for which we know that they are already exoplanets. The yellow ones are the Earth-like ones. The other ones have bigger gas planets and so on. So if we want to found out there a new colony for humans, how many people do we have to move away from the Earth? In my opinion, minimum quantity, one million people. This, it becomes a bigger atmosphere. Uh, uh, job here, and uh, they need to be transferred over a distance as much as 50 light years, and we need to bring living humans to this place because the newly born babies need nursing. We cannot just send frozen embryos, warm them up, and expect that there will be a, a new colony for humans. Travel time might be 500 years, maybe even more. But what does it mean, 50 light years? How oh, this sounds awfully long distance. But I put it in relation in order to give you a feeling to a galaxy which is as large as our own galaxies. A radius of about 100,000 light years. Ah. We talk only about 50 light years. Now, if you look at it, here would be the position of our sun relative to the center of that thing. And this little diameter here, uh, this circle there, this is a circle having a diameter of 1,000 light years. So the 50 light years we want to go is just a dot in there. It means we haven't even opened the garden door. <laughs> so what are the removal tasks? I think it has to take place in steps. First, we transport people and material to a near-Earth assembly station. There, we start building travel ships because with the uh, near orbit vehicles. We cannot travel over 50 light years distance. We need to build new ones. And then, if they are finished, we travel for 500 years. I need to hurry up. This uh, clock is chasing me. <laughs> 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 and if we arrive after 500 years at the destiny planet, uh, then we need to rebuild entry ship from all the material and bring the people down to the whole thing. How could such a travel ship look like? Cylindrical shape, two kilometers diameter, 500 meters width, and we put the, this thing in rotation once around it per minute. Then we have centrifugal forces, which are equivalent to the gravitational forces we have in here. And uh, this would be giving us 10 kil uh, square kilometers, a habitat for about 10,000 people. We talk about a million people, so we need 100 of these sort of things. 
and each of such a construction would weigh maybe 500,000 tons. What are the most uh, removal tasks? Technical capabilities need to be maintained and so on. You can read the rest yourself, except knowledge on board university. These people on their journey will not have success without maintaining the knowledge. Despite the fact that they will arrive with a 500 years old timer construction. And so we need the onboard university. Um, what would be the total mass? We're talking about, if you look at the details here, 53 billion, no, million tons. If you would launch this material and this mass of weight into orbit by the traditional today's approach, rockets, we would need to have a, or we have a lift of mass of 5 billion tons. This, nobody has a good feeling for such a thing. It corresponds to 14 million jumbo jets, each 360 tons. This means we need 700,000 launches, and this hopefully within 20 years. Uh, how would the removal, uh, how long would it last? 100 years preparation, transfer period 20 years, traveling 500, and another transfer down to the planet another 20 years. So, this 20 years for to the assembly station, one launch every 15 minutes around the clock. <laughs> for 20 years, we would not stop if one fails. What do they do if they are on this endless journey? Maybe they look out of the window and they see Andromeda. But they would always see the same picture because relative to Andromeda, they don't move. <laughs> How much could, would be the cost for such a retrieval? Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> not retrieval. <laughs> no for such an undertaking. Cost for the travel ship, 30 billion euros. It's an awful lot of money. But the cost for the transportation of humans and material into the near Earth orbit, 175,000 billion. Um, despite the fact of inflation in these days, <laughs> uh, we have not got a good feeling, and definitely, you all would say, this is a no-go. <laughs> but this is roughly equivalent to the global military expenditure for 100 years, calculated at the level of today's military spending. So it's clear we could afford that stuff. Provided, of course, we undertake a couple of things. Enormous technology progress, long-term research, and this is difficult job. Continuous concentration of 15 million people over 100 years on one objective. Can you imagine what it means? Space lift. Huh? I need to be careful with the time here. Uh, there are some uh, technology experts that told me that it, we could reduce launch costs drastically by a factor of 100 per kilogram. We only need to fix a rope 150,000 kilometers long on the equator, maybe in Kourou, I don't know. <laughs> and then we built, uh, this rope will stretch out because of the centrifugal forces of the Earth rotation. And then we built climbing lifts, and we can, without rocket propulsion, transport mass and people into orbit. If we release them at the top, then we might even swing them into orbits which are as far going as far out as Saturn. Uh, fantastic, eh? <laughs> but. It has the disadvantage, in particular if it is so cheap, that 
we will put lots of mass in orbit and therefore affect noticeably the Earth rotation. And the changing the Earth rotation means getting stability problem with our uh, geomagnetic field. And this protects us against the high energy radiation from sun and out of the deep space. So this is a process which we should not enter because we cannot reverse it, for sure not. So what would be the prerequisite for such an undertaking? Cancel all the military expenditure for 100 years. We would all love this. Of whether it's possible, I don't know. Global peace for 100 years, we would definitely love this. Peaceful decision now, when it comes to the point, now we start. Peaceful decision on who must or can leave the Earth. Or who can or must leave the Earth. It depends which was the a reason for undertaking this sort of stuff. So, oh, mission success, probability in conclusion, <laughs> is <laughs> zero point zero zero zero. Uh, ESOG is used to calculate always, already before missions are undertaken and launched, uh, mission success probabilities. I have applied this technique here and it, they are only zeros. So let's stay at home on our spaceship Earth and concentrate the efforts on maintaining our Earth a habitable planet. This is really a challenge. However, this is much easier than terraforming on Mars on, or Venus or a no return journey to a totally uncertain destiny in the infinity. But I don't read this stuff. You have to read it yourself and think what it means. <laughs> so, thanks for listening. I've made it in 17 minutes and 10 seconds. It was faster than yesterday. <laughs> <laughs>